Hi, Steve, are you there? Can you hear me okay? Ooh, I'm like backlit. <clears throat> Steve, can you hear me okay? Hi, Steve, can you hear me okay? Steve, you're muted. Yes, I can. All right, everybody, we are starting. Let me go ahead and share my screen so we can all see the opening slide. And it's, oops. <laughs> Sorry if y'all hear children's music in the background. I'm trying to keep my son preoccupied. All right, welcome. And so here we are in the FIE um, session of our Global Engagement Expo. Um, just some housekeeping um, as uh, with the previous sessions, all sessions during the expo will be recorded for posterity. We are going to upload them to the Global Engagement um, Expo website so that you can revisit the recordings um, uh, on your own time. And so for all of the sessions, please um, mute yourself. I'll be muting myself so you don't hear any of my son's uh, children music <laughs> playing in the background. If you have any questions, please feel free to um, put them in the chat at any time. We can always pause and, and ask Steve some questions. And again, this will all, all the recordings will be shared on our website. And so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our presenter from FIE, Steve Luther. Great. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Um, let's see if I can get my screen shared here for you. Um, uh, I, I, uh, I have to confess here that um, I am uh, uh, have a PowerPoint here that I'm gonna run through. However, I am on a Mac, so I converted it to Keynote and I am not entirely sure how to make it a full screen on a Mac here. So um, if you can sort of bear with me here, um, we'll kind of go, we'll kind of go through this way, but, um, anyways, thanks for joining us today. I am with FIE, which stands for the Foundation for International Education. We are a nonprofit, uh, study abroad provider that is based in London, England. And, uh, I am actually based in Oregon on the West coast here. So, uh, same time zone as California. Um, FIE is um, a program that's been around for 22, no, 23 years now. And so we offer study abroad on internship uh, opportunities in London and also Dublin, Ireland. Uh, we also have uh, a multi-country summer program that also uh, that goes to Ireland, Northern Ireland and Jordan in the Middle East. And we also have virtual internships. So I'm going to talk about all of those things uh, with you guys today. And uh, let's see, pardon my any flubs I have on, on, on uh, doing this uh, uh, presentation here. Um, but anyways, if you wanna get some more information about the FIE program, um, inf all the information about what we offer, including our scholarships, which are really good, um, you can uh, type in that um, uh, URL into your browser, study.fie.org.uk slash join FIE. It'll take you a minute uh, to sign up. And um, if you wanna do that, that's totally fine. It's not required. I'll also pop it up here at the end of the, uh, uh, end of the chat room as well, or end of, the, end of the presentation. Ah, there we go. I think I figured out how to do this. Hopefully, hey, there we go. All right, so um, we're gonna talk about, um, this is what we're gonna talk about. Um, I gave you a little bit of an overview about FIE. Um, we want to talk about our values, our locations, our in-person, our online options, scholarships, and next steps. And uh, uh, typically, I have some videos that I would play uh, on my presentation, but in the conversion from PowerPoint over to Keynote, they kind of dropped out. I don't know if I really, they've sort of been iffy about uh, playing a little bit. So maybe what I'll do is um, uh, I'll just kind of talk through where I normally would have had some videos uh, for you guys, and we'll go from there. So um, a few facts about FIE. I told you we're based in London. We're a nonprofit organization. We are an approved uh, program of Cal State Fullerton. Our programs are available for all majors uh, at the university. And those are our locations. Um, there's no fee 
to apply for an FIE program. So that may be a big difference if you're shopping around and looking at maybe some different uh, study abroad providers. We do not charge an application fee. Uh, so that's really, uh, really kind of a good thing. Um, I will talk about our scholarships because they're really good. They're up to uh, $3,000, actually a little bit more than that too for our programs. Uh, that we offer. Um, I also want to just uh, make mention here too, just um, uh, to reiterate uh, information that um, Cal State Fullerton has said is that um, in-person programs through uh, through Cal State are suspended through um, August 1. So um, we're looking at for FIE, uh, you know, other programs fall 2021 and beyond. Um, however, if you're looking for something this summer, uh, we do absolutely have our summer virtual internships. So I'll talk about those. Right. So um, what's kind of unique about FIE, I think we're a smaller program. We're not, we're not large uh, at all. We're very much uh, a program that gives lots of uh, personalized attention, really kind of work with you to kind of help you set your goals and have the type of experience that you really want to have abroad with us. So diversity and inclusivity, social justice and environmental sustainability are three of our core values uh, that we have as an organization that run through everything we do. And um, we welcome students from all backgrounds, um, all cultures, all races, all orientations, um, all of our um, uh, places uh, that we house students, um, our classrooms, every place, universities we work with are all um, uh, safe spaces too. So um, I think you can feel really good about this as a program that will uh, look after you, give you as much attention and support as you want, or uh, let you be more independent uh, to explore. But we really, what we really want to do is not just bring you over to London, bring you over to Dublin. We really want to make you have um, just a very deep dive experience uh, into those cultures, those cities, um, and the, the, those countries as well. So here are the programs that we offer uh, currently. So if you look on the Cal State Fullerton website, one of the things that you're gonna see is um, our, our Dublin programs and then our multi-country programs as the ones that are really featured. So, um, and these are all in-person programs. So these would be getting on an airplane and going abroad. Uh, so in Dublin, um, we have a, we have, um, a semester abroad program with the Dublin Business School, which can include a part-time internship. If you're not a business major, don't worry. Um, they actually, that's the name of the uh, university, but they have programs for all different types of majors, liberal arts and science and psychology and communications and media and journalism, um, all kinds of different things. We have a, a summer program, Irish studies and business. We also have a full-time internship uh, with an Irish company. Uh, or a nonprofit. Um, over in London, uh, kind of similar there, we have a full-time summer internship. We have a semester uh, with classes uh, with or without internship, a media studies program. We also do a really cool Leadership London program in the spring, which is great if you're interested in leadership or acquiring leadership skills. It's really kind of a great, uh, great option as well. And then our multi-country programs, um, conflict and the struggle for peace. So it's probably one of the most unique study abroad programs that are out there where you would go to Ireland, Northern Ireland and Jordan, and you would study the uh, peace process of uh, between Ireland and Northern Ireland. And then where Jordan fits in uh, with the Middle East peace and conflict generally in the Middle East region. And then we also, uh, if there's uh, any health majors here, we also have a comparative public health semester that we offer in London or Dublin as well. So um, between all of these, no matter what your major, there is a program for you, at least in an in-person program, right? So I'm just gonna go a little bit more into the Dublin options here. Um, uh, I love Dublin. Um, I've been to Ireland, I don't know, eight or nine times. My wife and I honeymoon there. Dublin's one of my most favorite cities in the entire world. Um, it's very friendly. Um, it's very walkable if you have any Irish roots, um, you know, I know a lot of students like that, but it's just, it's just really great, incredible culture. Um, you know, Ireland, they, they, they speak English, even with a bit of an Irish accent, but um, yeah, if you're looking for a semester program, uh, DBS for short, Dublin Business School, um, what's great about this school is they're a lot smaller than Cal State Fullerton. They have about 9,000 students. 
um, and you are pretty well guaranteed to take courses with Irish students. Uh, and they have hundreds and hundreds of courses available uh, too. And then most students would combine that with a part-time internship that we would place you in as part of your semester study. Um, if you're looking for in-person summer options, uh, the full-time summer internship is very popular. It's an eight week program. Uh, we cover pretty much all fields in the internship, except I would say engineering, medical and health sciences, pretty much anything outside of those few areas. Uh, we can definitely get you a guaranteed placement uh, with um, either an Irish company or a nonprofit organization or other type of business. Um, uh, it is uh, it is full time, so you would work Monday through Friday. Mon sorry, Monday through Thursday, uh, full time days uh, for eight weeks, and then you would have a three day weekend to explore or travel. Most every um, week you're there. I think seven out of the eight weeks you would have that opportunity. So it's a great option to spend your summer, best time of year to be in Ireland in terms of the weather at least, um, get some professional experience and also get to explore a little bit. And then for a little shorter summer option, uh, our Irish culture and business studies, uh, it's a five and a half week program. Um, there's two courses that you take uh, on Irish culture and history. And then there's a, a, a general business studies course also. So it could fulfill electives uh, for you if you're maybe if you're not like a business major. Um, the other added bonus is you get two long weekend field trips. We take you up to Northern Ireland, uh, and then we go out to the beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, beautiful West Coast of Ireland, my, my favorite part of the country uh, that's out there. So those are semester and summer in-person options uh, that we offer for you. And in terms of um, if I caught your interest maybe with the summer internship, the full-time in-person internship, these are the different areas uh, that we can do placements for. Um, so uh, like I said, pretty much anything except engineering, uh, medical science, um, health sciences, although we can do like public health uh, and charities and those types of things. But um, uh, yeah, if you, if you want to uh, consider getting an international internship, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, it would be uh, a game changer for you guys, no matter what you do to have that on your resume, employers will take notice and it will set you apart from the vast majority of other young people your age looking for jobs in your field. So, um, and this list also applies to London. Uh, I know I've started talking about Dublin, but this is also for London as well. So um, I've worked with many students in California who have done one of these internships in the summer or did a part-time as part of a semester program. And it really kind of changed their trajectory or helped boost their, uh, boost their trajectory into their chosen career field. Okay. Um, I also wanted to give a mention about this uh, great summer program uh, that we do called um, Conflict and the Struggle for Peace. Um, it's a five week program. Um, you start in Ireland, um, you take a course in, um, uh, the, the, well, you can see it here, the Lifestyles of Peace and Conflict Lessons Learned in Northern Ireland, it basically looks at the peace treaty and what the, the peace brokering process between Ireland and Northern Ireland back in the day when they were really um, at war, the Catholics and the Protestants and all of the uh, things that went on there. And the professor who teaches it actually was one of the negotiators of the peace treaty. So it's really a great, uh, incredible opportunity uh, uh, to, to, to learn under him. Uh, and then we do a study tour after you're based in Dublin for two weeks. Then we take you on a study tour up to Northern Ireland, up to Belfast and to Derry. So you actually get to visit um, the other side and hear the other sides of the story and the opinions and the facts and all that. It's really, it's really actually quite moving. Uh, whether you um, uh, have Irish roots or you don't, but uh, it's just really kind of a cool thing. Uh, then we fly, we fly all fly together to Jordan, uh, to the capital city of Amman for two weeks. And you take a course there in um, conflict resolution management beyond the uh, Arab-Israeli conflict. Um, it is a course that's taught by the, the professor is the director of um, Arab affairs at the United Nations. And he also was a negotiator of peace between Jordan and Israel uh, back in the 1990s. So again, just an incredible wealth of knowledge. Um, you do homestays in Jordan with local families, um, lots of field trips uh, there and also in Ireland as well. And then if you're interested in maybe taking Arabic language, you can extend the program for another four weeks and learn um, learn some Arabic as well. 
So um, this is open to any major. Uh, you don't have to be studying political science or peace and justice or anything like that, um, but it's it's very much a broad based uh, type of program open to all. Okay. Um, I want to talk about our um, online internships and virtual. So if you're looking for an opportunity this summer, um, uh, we do offer the online uh, internships that you can do right from your desk, your bedroom, wherever your home is. Um, they are um, uh, going to be eight weeks long this summer. They're 20 to 25 hours. Um, they would be either with an Irish or a British company. Could be either one. So you don't actually say uh, you're not applying necessarily to do an uh, internship with an Irish company or with a, a British company. We basically, our team looks at your application materials, sees what's the best fit, and then we make a placement that we think would be really good for you. The fields are, are quite a bit limited, uh, unfortunately, from the in-person uh, internships. So we have like five of these uh, general areas here um, that are available uh, for you. Um, what would happen in uh, this internship is um, you would um, you would intern for those hours listed. So it's about you know 20 to 25 hours. So it's kind of like a part-time uh, internship. Um, there would also be uh, you have the choice of taking it for credit or not for credit. So if you wanted to get a, take it for credit, FIE uh, offers uh, a, a companion course called the International Internship Course. Um, it's a great uh, it's, it's kind of a great mix uh, as well from the, you, you're doing the, the work from your, you know, from your computer uh, with the company you're interning for, but the, um, the, the, the course actually is an opportunity uh, for us to offer you mentoring uh, that you, you can also network with the other interns who are in the program um, and also get some really good resume skills and LinkedIn skills and you know, all kinds of really cool things. There's academic assignments that go along with it as well. Um, but you don't have to, you don't have to, we, we don't require it, uh, that you take it for credit. If you just want to do the internship, uh, that's fine as well. Okay. What else? Uh, London options too. We are, London is our home. We, if you've ever been to London, we are in South Kensington, which is right near Hyde Park uh, and Kensington Palace, which is one of the residences of the Royal family. So you're right in the heart of the action in central London. Um, we offer uh, basically three general types of programs. We do our in-person uh, eight-week uh, London summer internship program. Uh, it's a part-time internship uh, with two courses. So a little bit different. The Dublin in-person internship is a full-time internship. Uh, this is part-time with two courses. Um, there's also a media studies program that we do uh, in the summer. We um, uh, take a choice of courses. And I believe the options are in English literature, uh, photography, um, uh, I want to say either theater or creative writing. So I believe you take two out of those options. Um, and then we also kind of our hallmark program that we've been known for is our semester program. Um, most students do it with an internship. So we have about 40, 40 to 50 classes that we teach at our academic center in London. So you pick uh, from a variety of those uh, and then you would also do an internship um, as part of the program as well. So again, really good. If you're interested in going to London, uh, want more of a smaller personalized program, we're not a university in London, we're kind of our own academic center. So our class sizes are small, you would know your professors, they would know you. Um, and it just would give you a lot more kind of personalized um, uh, attention and probably more of a deep dive experience into London than if say if you went and studied abroad at a large English university. So that's kind of one reason to maybe look at that or look at us for that. Hi, Steve. There's a question in the chat. Priscilla is yeah. asking, would taking the credit course in the virtual program be an extra cost? Yes, uh, there's a $300 difference uh, for that. And I believe, uh, let's see, Cal let's see, I believe the cost uh, off, the off the top of my head, I, I could be wrong about this, but I believe the difference is uh, if you did the virtual internship Without the credit, I think it's $9, $945. If you do it for credit with the course, it would be $1,245. Um, and then you would get a transcript, uh, an official transcript from Drexel University uh, in Philadelphia, which is our school of record. So hopefully that helps. 
Thank you, Steve. And then one fun fact, actually, I did my program with the FIE, the London program. It used to do um, CSUF, Cal State Long Beach, and SDSU used to have a program, a the semester program in the fall there. And so the provider was FIE. And I know exactly what you're talking about, the building next to Hyde Park. I actually went there um, on my honeymoon 10 years after I studied abroad. So is it still Metrogate is the the the, the housing? Uh, the, well, there's, yes. A Metro there's multiple now. Uh, so there's Metrogate House, uh, there's two other housing buildings, and then Foundation House is the study center. Mm, yeah, and then um, that area, everybody, is a beautiful neighborhood, beautiful, it's actually a very posh neighborhood, <laughs> and um, I don't know if the study center at the time we were at, do they still have the, the rooms named after prominent British um, figures? So there was like the Freddie Mercury room, the the Winston Churchill room and things like that. It was a really fun place to, to do the program. They do. I really liked we, it. We've added more classrooms uh, over the years. When did you do your program there? Oh my, I'm dating myself, 2005. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Right. Well, I, I was in the field. I was in the study abroad field, but not with mm -hmm. FIE at the time. Yeah. Well, I had no idea. Actually, I did not know that until you just mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, it's a little fun. I don't talk about it much, but it's like, yeah, I remember FIE. It was great. It was great going with you. So when you say you, there's that small program feel, yes, very much. But it's it's nice. It's intimate. And um, I really liked the way that the program was set up at the time. So it's interesting to hear that it's still kind of similar set up that way. Yeah, yeah, we really haven't changed. Um, I think we've just gotten better uh, over the years. Um, but um, let's talk about scholarships because we have a lot of funding to give away. And I think um, I would encourage all students, no matter what study abroad program you were look at, to really search out scholarships because there's actually an incredible amount of money that is available. Um, and particularly now at this point in time, because with most study abroad's been canceled, very, very few students are abroad right now. Um, and it may take a while for study abroad, I, I think, to kind of get back to where it was. So my goodness, if you can write a good essay, I mean, if you're a writer, if you can't write a good essay, but you know, put one together and spell check it and all that, um, you can get some serious money for this. So for our semester programs in London or Dublin, the Sharif Rahman Semester Scholarship, Sharif Rahman was our founder. Um, he founded FIE back in the late 90s. He's since uh, passed away. So this um, scholarship is in his memory. But basically, it comes with a $3,000 scholarship um, that you would get uh, with it. You would become what we call an FIE student leader, which basically you get to do a lot of kind of fun things that other students wouldn't get to do. And then this application route here for the semester scholarship, basically, they parallel our um, our values. So basically, you just pick one of our values, we give you some prompts on what to write, um, and then you put that together. Um, we also have a Generation Study Abroad Semester Scholarship. Uh, this is specifically targeted to students from diverse and underrepresented backgrounds. So that can mean anything from um, you know, non-Caucasian students to uh, if you're the first in your family to go to a four-year college, um, um, you know, LGBTQ, LG, DBQ, hopefully I got that right, military service, lots of different things make up an underrepresented background. If you're looking at our summer in-person programs, we have $1,000 scholarships. Hey, we'd love to just hand over $1,000 uh, to students. And sometimes we don't get enough applicants. So um, it's it's just, um, I think of like a 500 or 1,000 word essay about why you want to study abroad. Um, and you could get a $1,000 reward. And then for our virtual internships, we offer full tuition scholarships. So um, uh, that would be the entire entire cost, entire fees, the FIA charges. So I don't know if um, it's blocked on my screen here by the um, uh, by the windows here um, uh, on the on Zoom here, but basically um, the deadlines uh, are for um, our, our deadlines are a month before our application deadlines typically. So for example, if you're looking for a summer uh, program like our summer application deadline is March 15th, but our um, uh, scholarship application deadline is February 15th. So that's coming up uh, this weekend. <laughs> so if you're looking like if you want to do maybe do the virtual internship for this summer and you're really interested in it, um, you could go onto our website and you can apply for that scholarship right now and you might get one of the one of the full tuition awards. Uh, fall scholarships, the deadline is, I believe, March 15th, and then uh, that's for fall semester, and then spring semester deadlines are um, 
September 15th. So again, they're always one month before the FIE application deadline. And um, yeah, like I said, whatever you do, please do apply for scholarships. There's not just through us, there's just so much funding. If finances are a challenge, um, this can really make it better. Okay. Uh, that was to be a video about a young lady who got a scholarship. Um, this is our website here. Um, you can find all kinds of information about it, fie.org.uk. Um, so it talks all about the internships and the programs, um, uh, and uh, you can actually apply uh, under the apply, uh, apply tab up there at the top there. You can uh, look at our dates, when, when our dates are, you can look at our fees, um, you can find our scholarship information. Um, all of our programs do include housing, those that are in-person options. So we do provide housing. So you can actually do virtual tours of our housing. You can read about our values, look at all the courses I've mentioned as well. And um, I want to do uh, one, before I take questions, I want to give a plug for a unique opportunity that you guys might wanna do this spring. So I'm going to exit out of here and then I'm going to hopefully share my, whoops, there we go. So hopefully you guys can see this, but I do wanna just mention to you that every year we run a student global leadership conference so we do this in the spring uh, over a weekend. Usually you have to be in London, you have to come in London to participate. But because of this pandemic world we live in, the Student Global Leadership Conference this year is going to be fully online and virtual on your computer, just like we are here. And there's also no fee. So we usually charge a small fee to attend for students who are in London or able to get to London, but it's completely free. Um, and I'm just going to scroll my uh, screen a little bit here. The theme of the conference is leadership for change in an uncertain world. It's over April 10th and 11th, so a couple of months away. And we are bringing together a group of leadership experts from around the world on all different types of topics. So if you're interested in acquiring some leadership skills, if you're already a leader on campus, let's say, and want to further develop that, this is a great thing to do. It's totally free. And it'd be probably one of the only opportunities that you'll have uh, to say that you have a global leadership conference on your resume. So um, I'm just going to scroll a little bit more here uh, for you. So it's open to any student, undergrad, graduate. Um, you can pick the sessions you want to be in. Um, they will be emanating out of London, but the times will work on the U.S. and we'll also have live speaker Q&A. Uh, we expect to have some hundred, I don't know how many hundreds of students will be there, be there but th this will also be an opportunity to network for, with students all around the world. So we get students not just from California, all around the US. We get a lot of students from different countries there. So kind of a nice uh, way to you know, meet some other international students. Uh, we've got a couple of um, uh, keynote speakers. And then if we kind of go down here, um, you can look and see some of the uh, topics that we're going to talk about. Um, we've got different leadership um, topics, women as leaders, um, community resilience. I mean, particularly for the uh, time of year that we have, or time of the world that we're in, uh, that we have been in the last four or five years, this is really kind of a cool thing. So I want to just make sure that you guys had that. You can go on our website, or it's right there, the URL of fia.org.uk slash SGLC conference. And um, yeah, it's totally free. You could register if you have that weekend open. What a cool thing to do uh, that we offer for you guys. So um, I think that is what I'm going to finish with here. If you've got uh, any questions, um, like I said, I'm in Oregon. I'm happy to always uh, you know, be contacted by email. Um, uh, I don't know, is Cherie really the contact here? This was from last fall's presentation, so you may have to help me out with that. Just a second. Uh, let me see what's on here. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, so she is, um, uh, Cherie is our associate director, so she's my boss. And so um, you can contact her. Um, another com uh, campus contact that you can put on in place in there is the uh, general S abroad account. We check that like every every minute. And so it will get directed to who you uh, need it to go to. So um, for anybody who's curious, um, we did change our office officially to the study abroad. 
and Global Engagement Office. The study okay. abroad is the traditional four credit international um, mobility type of program. Global Engagement is all of the various other types of programs that have since then come out virtual internships, study um, within the US, um, service learning program. So this is our office. Our email, our general email address is sabroad at Fullerton. Edu. Um, other contacts, if you'd like to add to that, is um, my colleague, Juem Kim, who you usually uh, contact for things like the Expo. So she spearheads that. So Juem Kim, and I think you have her email address, right? Yeah. Okay. And so she's a SAGE advisor, and we advise on our campus by major. And so then I um, am also an advisor um, if, if you need these or anybody needs these for whether it's for Steve or for the students. So Juim um, uh, advises for students whose majors fall under business and economics, communications and engineering and computer sciences. And I help advise the students whose majors fall under arts, education, um, natural sciences and math, health and human development and humanities and social sciences. Good, I didn't know that. I didn't know there was a <laughs> major between you guys. So I've learned something today too. Yeah, yeah, we, we've got an interesting structure. <laughs> And there's the sign up list too, um, if anyone wants to put their info in there. I, it looked like there was some activity in the chat room. I don't know if you wanted to see if there was anything that was uh, addressed. Uh, one question, I missed one above me, let's see. So um, there was one by Noor, is there a traveling opportunity for this summer? No, there is not. So um, at least not officially through the study abroad and global engagement program. So if you're looking to do a study abroad program, an internship or something like that in another country or even within the US, um, we wouldn't be able to approve it. A lot of these programs need the um, advisor to sign off on them. And so we're not able to sign off on any until at least fall. Can um, I ask a follow up to that? What if a student said, you know what? I just wanna go this summer. Um, what would be the ramifications if they did that and it was a credit bearing program? What, what, what would the students mm -hmm. be faced with if they made that decision? We, on our end, we wouldn't be able to authorize it. And so it would, it would be like a private choice. Um, and so one of the things that when we authorize programs is that we, pro we provide the student with travel insurance at no cost to them so they would have to make sure they're covered <laughs> and so i know some providers do offer their own so that would be fine um some other things might be yeah there we just wouldn't be able to support it so you know god forbid that you know the pandemic is hitting certain areas and they need evacuation we may or may not be able to support okay and, and yeah, yeah I, I just wanted to follow up on yeah, that yeah yeah if FIE is open for business, we actually yeah. do have students in London and Dublin mm -hmm. right now. And there is, um, you know, there's quarantines and COVID right. test requirements and the students, you know, they're there, but they're mm -hmm. having a very sheltered experience right. as compared to what they used to be. Right, so, right. Yeah. Totally different. I mean, exactly. we are planning to be open for business. If a student mm -hmm. said, hey, you know, I wanted to come, we would accept them. But the students would really have to know that, you know, maybe they wouldn't uh, receive credit they would get support on their home campus so that's why the mm -hmm. virtual programs are a good opportunity yes definitely and they, they've been so many students who've done them have shown like uh, have said how valuable the experience was so i'm glad that um they're uh, growing in popularity i have one more question here from priscilla or a comment at least it would be interesting to see a virtual program that was originally supposed to be in person offer an opportunity after the pandemic to allow students to stay in the host country true yeah i mean I'm, I'm trying to, so, uh, so uh, am I understanding the question right that um, a, a, a program, are you asking if a, if a student uh, came over and did a program while there was quarantine and then they stayed there and the quarantine was lifted or is it a program that they may, uh, may have just done before COVID-19 and what happened after it? I've seen some programs where they can do, for example, the virtual aspect of it. And then once things come down, they have like an added excursion um, for like maybe not as much or, or for an additional cost or something if they had that choice. I think that might be, is that correct, Priscilla? Priscilla said yes. <laughs> so that's okay. essentially what it is, like an add-on excursion following a virtual program. Do you have anything like that? Um, well, so interestingly enough is last summer, we had, uh, we launched our virtual internships last summer and there was a bunch of students from um, California. We actually, I think we had more from California than anywhere, but from other, you know, other states. 
And so they did their, their, they did their placements. And then we, we were organized, a plan to organize a summer kind of in-person site visit to London and Dublin this year uh, for those students. Now, whether or not that will happen, we're unsure about that. But um, we had tried to do some of our courses virtually, but it was just, it was more trouble than it was worth. So I would say, let's say, um, we can tease this out. Let's say maybe you're looking at a fall 2021 semester program in London or Dublin. Um, who knows what the situation will be in either city or country come September, but let's just say there was, um, you know, still quarantines and still need for COVID tests and all that sort of thing. I think what would happen would be if you had to like take classes virtually from London or Dublin, and then the, the restrictions eased and things got more back to normal, then yeah, we would absolutely program things that you could do out and about in the countries, not in your dorm room. So hopefully that helps a bit. All right, great questions, everybody. Thank you for being so engaged. Do we have anything else for Steve while he's here? Otherwise you've got the contact info, we'll have the recording up as well. Yeah, I'll throw up, um, where was it here? I had thrown up the leadership conf, whoop, no, that's not it, here it is, sorry. Um, I just wanna throw up our website again uh, here. Um, I did the screenshot, but basically um, you can, if you go under students, you can find out what it's like to be in London or Dublin, all about scholarships, financial aid, housing, health and safety. Um, we do, you can look at all of our programs here. Um, including our dates and fees and majors, um, internships, London, Dublin, and then you know all, all kinds of detailed information about both of that, our leadership programs that are here. Um, and then there's an apply button, which whoops, and sorry about the say hello annoying box there and then COVID info. So that's where you can find out a little bit more information uh, about us. And like I said, you've got my contact information or if you didn't uh, um, uh, write it down, then um, um, you can pop it in the box there or here it is again there. But thanks very much for your time. I really appreciate you guys coming. Thanks so much, Steve. Great to hear about the programs. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Have a great day. Um, check out day three of our expo tomorrow. We also have our SAGE student panel, I think, coming up uh, right now, actually. So feel free to join that if you want to hear about student experiences participating on study abroad and global engagement programs. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Great. Thanks again. Bye bye.